everybody, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here with me today. We're creating a box card using some products from the End Back Again release from Simon Says Stamp. These are the basic box card dies and it comes with two windows that you can select based on the size that you prefer. And I recommend you using that die to cut your window out on the side with that flap or tab and where you would adhere your box together. And that'll just create a little bit less of a hassle for you because you don't want to adhere something on that thin edge of the window that you cut, if that makes sense. There are also some coordinating products for your basic box card, including these clouds, and there are hearts as well. We're just gonna use the clouds today for my little scene. I die cut all three of those clouds and we are gonna set them aside and get ready here to ink blend. So what we have here with the basic box card dies, once it's die cut, is a four and a quarter by five and a half card panel with a little tab for some adhesive. When you form the box using two of these panels, what you have is only half of that canvas to work with. When I masked off this panel here, I wanted to ink blend only the far back wall when you're looking through the card box through that window to have color. And you'll see later that I also ink blended the other two panels and sides as well because I wanted the entire interior of the box to have some color since they collapse and you can see through the windows and I didn't want any white to show through. So you can also use patterned paper to make this more colorful and skip all the ink blending. I'm using positively saturated inks today in seafoam, surf, and ocean. I love these colors and I'm using the residual ink on my brush and I'm not picking up any new ink to add some color to the cloud borders as well. Okay, so once we're done adding a bit of color to those clouds, I'm gonna set them aside and we can go ahead and construct our box. Like I said, I went ahead and ink blended all the walls of the interior of my box. And I'm just adding red line tape now. You can use any strong double-sided adhesive tape. This red line tape is from Simon Says Stamp and I love it for constructing boxes. It's super strong and I love that it's thin and you can kind of see where you adhere the tape. So now I'm gonna line things up on my grid mat and make sure everything is nice and straight before I press down that adhesive to hold my box together. And we're not gonna seal the other side of the box just yet. We wanna go ahead and add our cloud frames on the inside. So I'm just burnishing those score lines and then also adding red line tape to all of those tabs. So to adhere these frames to the inside of my box, I am only adhering to one side of those walls. So on the right side of that wall where we have that solid piece of colored cardstock, we're gonna go ahead and just line everything up on the straight edge there and make sure that everything is perfectly centered before we adhere the right side of the box. So I'm gonna fold it flat and then take off all of the adhesive backing and then fold over that side of the box to seal my box. And this is gonna ensure that the box collapses perfect. And then you wanna fold it back and forth and make sure that they can be folded flat on either side. So I have my third and final cloud piece here and I'm gonna cut off the tabs because I wanna use this as a decorative edging on the front of my card box. So there are multiple ways you can use this. You don't have to use it just inside of the box. You can also use it outside and I thought I wanted to share that with you. Again, I am adding some red line tape to the sides and bottoms so that I can adhere it to the front frame of that window. So I've lined it up and once I have this box constructed with all of my little cloud borders, I can go ahead and stamp my image for the inside. Again, because we formed a box out of our typical A2 size canvas, we only have half of that to work with, so there's not a whole lot of real estate as far as images go. So I am just stamping this one adorable image from the Love Day set, and because he has a balloon, I kind of want him floating away up in the clouds. So that's the look that I'm going for, and I'm just gonna quickly color this with Copic markers in some simple browns for this puppy. So I've used some E30s, for the darker spots. And now I'm using some E40s for his body. And of course the reds are using some R30s and I'm deciding where I want to put them. I decided I wanna kinda of hang him inside and put him at an angle so it looks like he's floating up. 
So in order to secure him inside the box, I'm gonna use some acetate strips and I'm adding some red line tape to the edges of this. And I've added one side to his body and then I'm just gonna attach the other side to one of the cloud borders on the right and left sides. Once the puppy is sturdy inside the box, I can go ahead and work on a sentiment. So I'm using a sentiment from the Love Day stamp set that the puppy came from, and I am just gonna emboss him over some black cardstock with white embossing powder. And you can see that my embossing powder tool is clay-based, so I'm just gonna wipe away that clay powder using a cloth. Then I'm gonna die cut that sentiment using a coordinating die from that same stamp set. And I want it at the bottom there, so I'm just adding a bit of liquid adhesive to the bottom and sides of the Sending Love Sentiment, and that will finish my card. Once it folds flat, you can put this inside an A2 sized envelope, and that just fits perfectly inside, and is a fun way for the recipient to open up your box card and have a display as well. I hope you enjoyed this project. Check out the links below as all of the products I use will be linked below for your convenience. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day everyone. Bye!